Hey everyone, my name is Jeff Babbitt, Learning Dojo, and I am going to walk you through one of my favorite tools. This tool I use all the time. It is quite literally, I know, I know that's the wrong way to use literally, but it's quite literally my brain. So I would not be able to function without this tool, and that is Trello. Trello is by far one of my favorite tools to be able to keep track of content that I'm creating, blog posts that I'm working on, and courses that I'm building, things like that. So I wanted to walk you through the basics of how to get started with Trello, what those cards are, what the different uh, rows and columns are as well, and just go through and walk you through the basics. In future videos, I plan to create more automations, more uh, customizations that you can do with Trello as well. It is very flexible as far as what you can do, but I wanted to dive in and just show you the basics in this video. So let's go ahead and go into Trello, which you can get access to Trello by going to trello.com. It is a mobile application. It is a desktop application as well. So you can uh, capture things on your mobile application. You can capture things on your desktop and have it all synced up. And it uses cards and columns. Now the cards are your tasks or they're the different areas that can have subtasks. It's really flexible as far as what you can do here. So once you sign up, and pretty much everything that I'm gonna be showing you today, you can do for free. There are some paid features that you can do when we talk about automations and customizations. There are some paid features that you may want to explore, and it's really not that much if you wanted to be able to do that. But I wanted to focus more on the basics and the free version and what comes out of the box here. So once you've downloaded this, I do have my desktop application and it is on Mac and PC as well. And I do have a project created. I wanna walk you through a couple different projects that I have built to kind of give you the context of what you can do to, or how you could use this for your projects and your developments. And then I'll walk through building a completely new one from scratch and talk about that as well. So this is a recent course that I created for Pluralsight, and that is media handling with JavaScript. And so as I start to think through courses, I start to section them out in different chapters or different modules. And then I start to add cards. You can simply just add a card with a title. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a title here, as simple as that. So you can just add a card in the different sections. You can add a list or a column. And so let's just go ahead and just say list there. You can add a list there and start to add cards there. So it is very simple to just out of the box start to use. I'm gonna archive that one here. You can create several different projects and inside of each of those projects, you can have different lists, different columns, different cards. And then inside of each card, you can go ahead and have checklist and other items inside of there. So what happens when I come into here and I select one of those cards is I start to add the description. So these are things of like, okay, what do I feel like is going to happen inside of that video? So, and then I just write down different code snippets, if it's anything to do with code, or just any specific thing about the video that I want to cover. And then I go into scripting. So I can go ahead and have my script here. All you do is you select here and you have a full text editor. You can come in and bold, italicize, you can add images inside of here, you can add links, you can add code snippets, you can mark up in different ways. There's a lot of different things that you can do right within the description. So now that card that you've created here has a description. Now over on the right hand side, these are comments. And so if you're working with somebody else, they can come in and add a comment. But what I like to do is add progress notes of what I've been able to do to accomplish this. Cause I don't always accomplish the task or an item right away. So I come over here and I add a comment. I was able to do this today. I was able to do that. I was able to do this. And so these are things that you can keep a historical record of things that have happened here. Now up on the top is where you can also add a cover image if you wanted to add a cover image. But if you select this drop down box, this is also where you can move the card to a different uh, project. You can copy the card, you can make it as a template, you can archive, you can share the card as well. But over here uh, allows you to add labels, it allows you to add dates, and this is where you can add sub checklists as well. So if this is a video that I'm creating, there are several things that need to happen with that video. If this was an e-learning course that I wanted to create, and this was gonna be module one in that e-learning course, there are several things that need to happen inside of that project. 
And so page one, maybe it needs to have text. Page two, it needs to have audio. So you could even use this as like a collaborative storyboard and being able to say, okay, this is what I think it needs to have. And then somebody else can come in and add some comments or update the description and say, hey, I was able to add this. And you can start to storyboard out these different pages inside of your course. There's a lot of applications so flexible as far as what you can do here. You can add additional members, you can add attachments, Word documents, uh, images, you can add PDFs, all these types of attachments, all to do with this one task, with this one area, or in my case, this one video or this one page. And so all of that you start to plan out here. Now, when you add a checklist, you can come in and add, okay, this one is our prep checklist. And so you can add several different checklists. And so in order to prep, you can say prep item one and then prep item two. So as you start to add those checklists, and again, like I mentioned, you can add another checklist. And so this one is going to be production. So let's go ahead and add a production one into this. And this one is going to be prod one, prod two. And you can click on each of those tasks and you can see a progress of how much you have completed in the prep or how much you've completed in the production. So each section, as you start to break this out, each video has its own tracking. It can have its own kind of uh, subsets and, and tasks and other things around that. Uh, really flexible. I love, this is why it is literally my brain. I know that's not the right way to use it, but it is way, the way that I keep track of everything and where I'm at with all of these different projects that I work on. You can also come in here and convert it into a card. If you do find that this item needs more detail, you can go ahead and convert it to a card or you can go ahead and delete it as well. You can add several people to the card if you wanted to. And I'm going to go ahead and add just myself here. The benefit of that is that if I come back into here is it allows you to see who's in charge of what task. Now I have worked with Trello in a lot of different ways. I have created, um, I've worked on proposals where somebody would submit a proposal for a conference. And then what I would do is I would go in there and each of the proposals would be a card. And in that card, you can add labels of accepted, not accepted. And then you can add uh, people who need to review this one as members. In fact, if I come in here, that's one thing we haven't covered is these labels. So you can actually come in and add different labels. And these are essentially steps in your progress, steps in your project. I keep it like slides have been made, audio has been recorded, video has been done. Those are important things to keep track of. And you can come in and create a new label here and it gives you various colors to choose from. I'm gonna go ahead and select this color here and then I can just add the label here and then click on create. Now, when you go in here and you can select that label you can uncheck it if you decide it's no longer there. And you can see here, like videos submitted, audio recorded, those, it keeps track of that progress. With a bird's eye view, I'm able to take a look at what the status of that particular task is. Initially though, this label typically is not actually visible. You'll see like a little purple or yellow little label here. But if you click on it, that's where it expands it out. And I think it's a little bit more useful to be able to do that. So you can do it this way where you're actually mapping out module one, module two, module three, or what I do, especially with my blog posts, is I actually take these different video ideas and I use them as a Kanban board. A Kanban board allows you to move things into different columns for the status of like, this is in production, this one is in editing, this one is completed, things like that. I'm gonna switch over here to my blog post right here. And you can see here, I have my backlog. So whenever I'm thinking about a blog post, I usually just add it to my backlog of like, here's a video that I may work on in the future, a YouTube video that I might create. Then I put it inside of my backlog. Then I start to prioritize my task list. And so that is a typical thing as a product manager to be able to go through and groom your backlog and be able to pull out things that are important and you start to prioritize it. So I have my prioritized section here where I start to put things up towards the top of what I want to work on next. As I start to work on it, I then go in and add it to the description. I add any code snippets because I talk a lot about JavaScript and Storyline. So I add any code snippets that I wanna talk about, any scripts or things 
like bullet points that I wanna cover inside of that video, I start to add here as well. I sometimes also add a label of like where I'm going to record this and also what subject is it about? Those are things that I've done in the past. But since it's in prioritized, I then start to groom it a little bit more and I say, okay, now I want to pull things out that are going to be in production where I start to finalize my task list. So I just take a card and I drag it over to production here. And then inside of production, this is exactly where I start to map out what I want to cover. So if I click on this one right here, but I did add a bunch of bullet points of what sections I wanted to talk about. And then once it's ready to edit, I just move it over to ready to edit. And then I prioritize just by dragging it up and down which ones I want to work on first. Once a video is edited, then I go to ready to release. And once a video is completed and published to YouTube, I move it over to completed. And if you hover over it, there is a mark complete. And you can see that's what creates the checkbox there. So it's a way for me to keep track of all these different things that I have going on in my brain all these different projects, all these different videos that I'm working on, and to keep track of it in different sections. All of these are in production. All of these are being prioritized. All of these are, you know, uh, ready to be edited. All of these are editing or edited and ready to be released. It puts them in those different statuses, and it allows me to keep track of where everything is at. So that's another way to be able to use Trello's, to use it as a Kanban board and to be able to move it into those different statuses. And like I mentioned, I can also use it in similar as a Kanban board to track feedback. So when I worked at Amazon, I had to go on site to uh, some of the fulfillment centers to be able to test my course and test it on the devices where associates were going to be taking the courses. Now these devices did not allow you to record anything. So as I was going through my storyline course, I needed a way to be able to capture and keep track of things that were not working or things that I needed to be able to edit. And so I set up this feedback tracker. Inside of that feedback tracker, I basically capture anything on my phone. And I set up a shortcut on my iPhone to be able to capture an item and place it inside of the backlog. Then when I was ready to start working on it, I would move it over to current. And then once I needed to test it again, I would move it over to need to test. If everything has been completed, then I go ahead and move it over to completed. So this was a way for me to be able to capture feedback. Now I have on my phone the shortcut here that I used. So I'm gonna walk you through this and this was built using the shortcut apps on an iPhone. There are shortcut apps for Android too, but I'm gonna go ahead and just tap on track issue. Now this will pop open and I will cover this in a future video. So well, this will pop open things that will allow me to keep track of that task. And so let's go ahead and say issue one, and then I'm just gonna describe the issue. This is the issue, hit done. And then it's gonna ask me if I wanted to take a picture. Like I mentioned, I could not record my screen. And so oftentimes I would actually take a picture. And so I would just point it at the screen and then I would go ahead and just snap a picture. Then it would attach that picture. I can retake it again, but I can say use photo. And then it says, what module do you want to attach this to? Oftentimes I was working with several different courses, several different modules. And so I would just select the module, in this case, module one. Immediately, and it takes a second for the picture to show up, but immediately after that, it pops open in my backlog inside of Trello. So now I have that card. I have that attachment, which is a cover photo. Then it adds the issue description, and then it also adds the module that I selected. So you could set up a shortcut to be able to capture the issue on your phone and have it automatically sync to Trello. So whether you're using this to keep track of like the status of videos or to organize a course or something like that, or to be able to capture feedback, that's how versatile Trello is. And that shortcut app actually even works on my Mac as well. So I could take a screenshot and capture things as I'm going throughout the course. So that is a quick introduction into Trello, how you can go in, start adding cards, you can start adding different uh, labels, Kanban boards, you can just use it to organize your courses into different sections, to have other people get view feedback as you're starting to script it out. It is so versatile, so flexible as far as what you can do. And everything that I've shown you, I did with the free account. There are some other things that you can do. So if you go into the automation, you can actually even automate different things. So if it moves it over to a different section, it automatically adds a label. Those are things that I wanna talk about in future videos. But hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to use Trello, 
how to get started with Trello, how to start organizing your courses, organizing different sections of your work or even your life, and how easy it is to do that inside of Trello. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If you like this video and you wanna see more of these videos, make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel. That's all I have for today. So thanks everyone and I'll see you next time.